In this presentation, I want to introduce what we mean by Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium and what the assumptions behind it are. So alleles can change due to a number, a number of reasons. They can even become fixed, as we've talked about in previous presentations. So allele frequencies can bounce around due to genetic drift and even become fixed. They can change due to positive or negative selection. There are many different forces that can cause allele frequencies to change, selection, drift, immigration, bottlenecks, founder effects. Now, an interesting thing is if all of these forces were to stop, then as long as a few other assumptions hold, then allele frequencies won't change at all between generations. And um, that means that evolution has stopped. This is what we mean by Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, which is the particular scenario when all forces of evolution stop, how allele frequencies remain constant over time. What this looks like on a graph would be, over time, allele frequencies stay the same and continue to stay the same and continue to stay the same. Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium is a useful tool, or the Hardy-Weinberg equations are useful tools, but it does require some very strong assumptions to be to um, to hold. It requires that all evolutionary forces are absent. This means there are no mutations, no new mutations creating alleles. There's no natural selection, artificial selection, or sexual selection. There's no gene flow, no immigration or dispersal occurring. Also, a key uh, assumption is that mating is completely random. There is no preferential mating, no um, like mating with like or like mating with dislike. Mating is purely random. One little caveat on this is uh, random mating, uh, literal random mating rarely happens, but for Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium to to apply. It just is that mating is random with respect to the gene of interest. This is a, an important little caveat because even though mating is often uh, not random, with respect to a certain gene, especially a gene that is not under natural selection, mating might actually more or less be random. But again, random mating means no sexual selection, no sort of mating with respect to the gene of interest. Important thing about Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium is for it to be literally true is that populations have to be large, very, very large, technically infinite. Now, often uh, large is close enough, uh, but to be literally true, a population has to be infinitely large. The converse of this is uh, forces like genetic drift are um, stronger when populations are small. The reason why populations have to be technically infinitely large is because anytime populations are finite, there will always be genetic drift. Anytime there is a fixed number of individuals in a population, which means anytime there's a population, because all populations have a limited finite size, anytime there is a finite size population, drift will occur. And the only way for genetic drift to not occur is for a population to be infinitely large. However, um, genetic drift is usually most pronounced in relatively small populations. When you get to larger populations, it's not so big of a deal. So for Hardy-Weinberg uh, assumptions to literally hold true, thing you're, you're dealing with a very restrictive set of assumptions, very specific. No mutation in the gene of interest, no selection, no gene flu, and rating, mating is random with respect to the gene. Population is very, very large, technically infinite. Now, none of this is ever really going to happen. So that means that you might wonder when is a Hardy, when is Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium interesting or useful to think about? What is its use? Well, first of all, the Hardy-Weinberg assumptions can be approximately valid. Populations don't have to be infinitely large. They just have to be fairly large. A couple thousand, couple hundred thousand individuals is probably large enough. Large enough. 
mating doesn't have to be perfectly random. It just has to be random with respect to the gene of interest um, and so forth. Um, so Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium is often approximately valid for what we call neutral alleles. These are mutations in non-coding DNA, mutations in introns, mutations in DEN genes, which no longer work. All of these are mutations that don't impact fitness, that they are not going to be acted on by natural selection. They're not beneficial or deleterious. And so that satisfies the assumption of Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, which is there is no selection. All the other assumptions, they're hard to literally meet in the real world, but for a neutral mutation that doesn't impact fitness, as long as the, there's a couple thousand, couple tens of thousands of individuals in the population, that's probably large enough that drift isn't going to be a huge factor as long as there uh, is, since there's no impact of fitness, mating, even though if, if mating isn't literally random, if the mutation isn't impacting fitness, then mating is going to be random with respect to that gene. You, you can't make decisions on how to mate when you have a gene that you don't know, that isn't impacting fitness. So for, for neutral alleles, these assumptions are close enough to, to um, to applying that we can use Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. Also, Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium is a null model. It's a model that sets forth expectations when nothing interesting is happening. And so therefore, it's a point of comparison for determining if something is happening. So it's a point, it's a starting point against which to study evolution and determine its cause. For example, if you find a gene or an allele that appears to be in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, you could con you could conclude that you don't have evidence that it's under natural selection. You could ha you would have evidence that it is a neutral allele. If you find that a gene or an allele is not in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, that it is out of Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, then you can look at your how how the patterns of uh, allele frequencies, and you can start to make uh, form hypotheses for, hypotheses for what type of natural selection or what other evolutionary forces are occurring to prevent it from being in equilibrium. So again, a gene with alleles in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium is likely to be neutral. Uh, it is going to not have any impact on fitness, and as long as the population is relatively large, uh, all the other assumptions will hold. And, a, a, um, and it's not going to be impacted by natural selection. A allele that is out of Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, there might be something interesting evolutionarily going on. It's important to emphasize neutral alleles because finding neutral alleles, truly neutral alleles, can be useful uh, for population ecologists and for geneticists. Um, how they're used is outside the scope of this course, but just know that we use Hardy-Weinberg logic to identify and validate that um, alleles are neutral and we can use them for other purposes. Again, an allele not in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, it might be under selection. It might not, but if an allele is out of Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, there's a chance it could be under selection. So determining that it's not in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium could be a piece of evidence that would give us reason to further an area of study. <laughs>